Hey there everyone, today we're going to learn about becoming a responsible internet citizen. Let's get started. Hey there everyone, today we're going to depart from our usual subjects of just basic computer use and for this last episode in the Computer Basics series, touch on what it means to be a responsible computer user. Now, we can make a conversation about just being responsible with your computer physically, but in the modern day, with the internet, there's more to, th more to it than just taking care of your computer. Nowadays, when you're on the internet, you have to partake in a sort of social contract where you'll agree to meet certain standards, but alongside that, you have to keep yourself secure as well. So today, we're primarily going to focus on two things, keeping your own information secure on the internet and knowing how to protect yourself from the dangers that are out there, as well as touching on what it means to be technically ethical or tech ethics. Uh, this is important because you'll find that as you become more uh, familiar with computers, you'll find that it's almost kind of like a superpower. You'll be able to do things that other people might not be able to. And with that, it's kind of like a Spider-Man situation, where with great, greater power comes greater responsibility. So, with that, let's go ahead and transition into the talk about security. To help us along with the discussion today, I'm actually going to pull up this site, securitychecklistli.st. Um, so, just list with a, a dot in between the LI and the ST. But with this, I'll walk you through some common and important things to have in terms of your own computer use or computer security. To start off, we'll touch on the subject of passwords. When it comes to passwords, you're always told the same things, whether you learn it in school or you're learning about this at a job. And usually what you'll be told is to just make things so that uh, they aren't related. Well, usually you're told to relate, relate things to your life in a way. And to keep them simple so that you can remember them. As someone who explores the uh, infosec uh, part of the uh, tech community, I'll tell you that usually that actually isn't a good call. If you make, decide to make your password centered around things in your life, uh, people in your life, uh, events that are really prominent, that will allow you to be open to what's known as social hacking. Uh, what I mean by that is that if you have a friend with malicious intent, potentially if they know details about your life or can find those details about your life uh, through social media or other means, they can essentially socially hack uh, uh, information from you in order to figure out things like your passwords. So with that, I'll go ahead and actually discuss what items you actually want to have inside of a password. Nowadays, you can actually use programs that will auto-generate and uh, manage your passwords for you. For example, the uh, LastPass, Dashlane, these uh, programs right here. Uh, but I don't want to push you guys into purchasing anything. But it, if you really just want to have a series of passwords that you'll be able to remember and keep personal, my best suggestion is to uh, think of something that is personal to you, maybe a hobby of yours, that not many people know about. Mix that in with a number so you can use a hash or a potential symbol and you'll find that some places don't allow for certain symbols to be used in passwords but really what you want to do is create a series of passwords that are different enough from each other so that security wise you'll be safe but similar enough so that you can remember them yourself the safest place they'll ever be is inside of your head alongside that with passwords, uh, here it's already telling us about uh, six digits plus. Usually, uh, when it comes to passwords, the longer they are, the harder they are to hack. This is because if someone decides to brute force 
or essentially uh, uh, try and enter in your password millions of times using a bot, it becomes exponentially harder the longer your password is in terms of characters because it has to test every possibility with every one of the symbols on your keyboard and in between. Alongside uh, past passwords, we'll go ahead and touch on two-factor authentication. Now, what exactly is that? Well, usually, nowadays, you'll find that you have more than one uh, electronic device on you. This allows for a company like Google or Facebook to uh, this allows them for them to do this thing where they can ask for verification from you directly through two devices that belong to you. So if someone overseas manages to get onto one of your devices or if you lost your laptop and someone tries to get in, you would get an, an alert on your phone which would uh, allow for you the opportunity to stop that sort of hacking. Following this, and now to fast track just a little bit, is the idea of encrypting your devices. Most devices nowadays, including Android, iOS, Windows, and Mac OS, allow for on-device encryption, meaning uh, the transactions or events that happen on your computer are hashed and or interpreted in a certain way so that only your system can uh, actually access the information and utilize it. So per se, uh, let's, uh, if someone tried to get into your computer through remote means or if someone wanted to uh, intercept things that were coming out of your computer, the encryption of your device would make that a lot more challenging and actually nearly impossible. Alongside that, you could also do things like changing your DNS. Uh, DNS is essentially uh, a setting in your computers, now this is a little bit more advanced, but you get to choose where, what, what servers your computer communicates with before you get something sent back to you. For example, if you were to load up a web page, usually your DNS is set up to go through your internet service provider. Instead, you can go through services like 1.1.1.1 or 9.9, la la la. Uh, and these services allow for you to send this stuff to different servers so that your stuff isn't being watched by internet companies and it isn't being watched by someone you potentially wouldn't want to watch your things. Alongside this, VPNs are a great service for masking any of your internet activity, uh, either in public or at home if you're really paranoid about that sort of thing. With that, we've touched on some basic security needs, uh, some basic uh, security concepts that could be important to you as an everyday user. I wouldn't say the DNS is there, but a VPN, a strong password, and two-factor authentication can be a great and non-intrusive way to introduce a lot more security into your computer use. Now I've touched on the VPN, there's uh, a couple of other things you could do, like use a safer browser, safer search engine, a uh, different email provider to potentially. I wouldn't really advise getting off of Gmail, even though uh, in terms of your information, they may uh, give certain things to advertisers. It's usually a pretty well-kept box in terms of uh, outsiders who are looking to cause uh, harm. But uh, aside from that, I actually want to transition into the uh, value of uh, tech efficacy. This allows for the world to become a bit safer of a place when it comes to tech. So let, uh, I just want to keep this short and simple because so many people drag on about this concept but what really matters is uh, really just be a good person <laughs> when it comes to what you can accomplish with tech. As uh, appealing as hacking sound in terms of the power, the ability, and what you can do, um, when it comes down to it, you can be causing a lot more harm than you can think. In the modern digital age, the idea of doxing, the idea of DDoSing, a hundred different things can become extremely dangerous for someone's life. Uh, back in, uh, it's become common 
for certain types of attacks, certain types, whether digital or other other types, uh, happen just because people leave their information out there. So it's equally as important to protect yourself on the internet, but equal, <laughs> equally as important to also be responsible. Be a human being when it comes to the use of your tech. You can, you, you can really do a lot with it. And again, I'll go back to the Spider-Man situation. With great power comes great responsibility. So with that, I hope that my preaching can at least reach your heart if you ever become a master hacker or can build an AI that can change the world. But with that, we'll end our series on computer basics. Until next time, join us in the next series. Bye.